everyone, I'm Alex and I'm the founder of Travel Sisters. We're a female only travel community and usually we'd empower you to travel safely together by using our app. But lockdown kind of sucks. So here's our special coronavirus travel interview series. I will be interviewing some interesting and fun travel sisters from our community living across the whole world. And if you want to join and have a travel chat with me as well, then make sure to join our group and let us know. Hi Claire, thank you very much for joining me today on this call. Uh, how about we start with introducing you briefly and tell us where you're in lockdown and how's the situation? Are you going crazy yet? <laughs> Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm Claire, the Fearless Wanderess. Um, I'm currently based in Boston at the moment. And uh, yeah, the situation right now, we're currently in our surge, um, as they're referring to it right now. So things are kind of at a scary level with hospitals. Luckily, it's not a hot spot here like it is in New York, or um, I'm actually originally from Michigan, and that's a huge hot spot right now. Um, but things like masks are required in public now for most muni municipalities in the Boston area. Mm -hmm. um, I'm lucky that I can work from home right now um, and stay safe, but uh, things are definitely in lockdown and for the foreseeable future too. Uh, I live in a 400 square foot studio apartment, so <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, being isolated like that, it. Uh, yeah, it's easy to go a little crazy. Um, I'd have to say, like, moving around, I try to get outside every day, even a date like today, a freak day where it starts snowing. <laughs> but um, definitely moving around has been helping a lot and staying in contact with friends and family. Um, but I think I speak for a lot of people, including myself, that I'm really looking forward to when this is all over. The travel dreaming is definitely like more intense than ever right now. <laughs> yes. So I'm getting through all right at the moment. <laughs> okay. That's why I thought let's have a chat about travel since we can't travel. So let's yeah. start off with what are your top three things to do or see in your area, which is Boston right now? Yeah, absolutely. So my favorite part of Boston is called Back Bay. So Boston is pretty unique. It's like a big city, but it's kind of stretched out over a long sort of a peninsula almost. And so this middle section of the city called Back Bay is full of beautiful brownstones, lots of really cute shops and cafes. Unfortunately, right now it's all shut down, um, but that's what I'm really looking forward to doing which, once everything's not in lockdown anymore. Um, so that's my top place to go for sure. Um, also, I'm a science nerd, so I'm a biologist actually at a biotech company right now too. Um, so I love the Science Museum uh, that's across the river in Cambridge, like near downtown Boston. They have a really cool planetarium um, where they do these awesome light laser shows with soundtracks. So like I went to one that had a Coldplay soundtrack and it's um, <laughs> a really cool thing that they composed together with all the lights, a really unique experience, I think. And my third is a classic. It would be uh, the Boston Common, which is a big park that's right downtown. So you get all, especially this time of year in the spring when everything has just started blooming. The flowers are really beautiful. The pond is really beautiful. Even in the winter when that pond freezes over, they open up ice skating. So there's things to do um, all year round. And then you have the, the cityscape with all the skyscrapers right around you um, between downtown Boston and Back Bay. So those are definitely my three favorite spots to hang out here. Sounds lovely. And what are your top three favorite places you've traveled to? Yeah, it's a really tough question. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone so far has said that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a couple top favorites for different reasons. Um, my number one favorite is Albania. Um, I got to live there and intern there at an environmental conservation NGO about four years ago while I was in university. And it was such a unique, awesome experience. It's my first time also living alone. Um, so I, I'm a huge solo traveler. That's what I write about. That's what I encourage people to do, especially female solo travelers. So this was such a formative experience, not to sound cliche, but um, the natural beauty of the country is nothing like I've ever seen. It's got all sorts of climates, so it can grow 
basically any fruit you could imagine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it's got these beautiful mountains in the north that are super remote, but also these amazing beaches that look exactly like Greece because it's just north of Greece, but it mm -hmm. doesn't have any of the people and none of the prices. Um, so I think it's really still an undiscovered gem. It has been gaining in popularity over the last few years. Um, but they're really trying to do things right with ecotourism and taking care of their environment. And they have all sorts of ancient ruins. There's just so much to explore and some of the nicest people on earth that I have ever met. Um, so I always highly recommend Albania. And I would have to say my second favorite is Costa Rica. It's right up there. Um, I had the chance to backpack through Costa Rica for a full two months last year. Wow. And that was super amazing to just get to see every corner of the country. I prefer to take my travels pretty slow, um, get a chance to really settle in where I'm staying and meet people. And that also, I'm a huge nature lover. I love both the mountains and the sea and Costa Rica has a little bit of everything um, as well as things for the science nerd in me with all of their biodiversity and animals. Uh, the sloths were my absolute favorite. <laughs> yeah, really delightful to travel there. Um, I'd have to say my third favorite would be Denmark. Um, I got to study and live there also after I graduated. Uh, super, you know, it fits all the stereotypes that you hear about Scandinavian countries, um, but Copenhagen is super lovely. I think the culture is really amazing with this Danish concept of Hygge. I don't know if you've ever heard of it before, <laughs> um, but just like this cozy contentedness that they have with all of their candles and their pastries. And there's really um, this uh, feeling of community between all the people and it's so safe and people are so trusting. And I found um, the culture there as well as the way like the system, the government works um, is really harmonious. So I really enjoyed living there and traveling around there as well. Wow, sounds great. You've lived all <laughs> over the place. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of everything. <laughs> Settled now or moving again? Yeah, so settled for the time being. Uh, like I said, like I work at a biotech company right now, um, but I don't like being settled anywhere for too long. So I'm mm -hmm. especially in lockdown getting pretty itchy feet again. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see within the next year, we'll see where I end up. I don't know. I kind of surprise myself every year. So we'll see. <laughs> okay, well, next question. If money didn't matter, where would you go right after lockdown? Yeah, that's a super easy answer actually is the Philippines. Um, so I've only been to Indonesia and Southeast Asia so far, um, and I really, oh, I've been wanting to go back so badly, but for some reason over the past year, the, just the Philippines keeps coming up in random corners or random travelers that I meet. They say, oh, I love the Philippines. You should absolutely go there. Um, and I love finding locations that are really tropical like that, but they're also, I don't know if you could even consider the Philippines off the beaten path necessarily anymore, but it's less traveled than places like uh, Bali, for example. And um, so I would really love the chance to get to discover all of that. And I'm dreaming of that turquoise blue water right now. <laughs> so I'd definitely like to go there after this. Make sure you have enough time because I think random fact, if you wanted to visit every single island in the Philippines, I think for at least a day, it would take you about uh, 20 years or something like that. Like a lot of time. <laughs> they have thousands of <laughs> islands, I think. Uh, don't pin <laughs> me down on the exact numbers, but uh, yeah, it will take you some time. All the That's islands. Really, really good to know. Yeah, I'll have to plan my time wisely. <laughs> we have time now and all the time for planning a new trip. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, what is your personal top travel tip? Yeah, my top travel tip, which I think is kind of uh, special to my situation personally, I guess, is that I one of the reasons why I love solo travel is because it really encourages you to get out of your shell. Basically, you have to talk to people or else you're not going to have a very great experience. And also, you're not going to be able to get the help and the advice that you need because inevitably you're going to have questions and you're going to need help with that. And I, um, before I started solo traveling, really experienced a lot of social anxiety, like just talking to a random stranger, like the pizza man coming to the door was a really anxiety inducing oh, experience. Wow. And so, um, I suggest like whenever you travel, engaging with local people, I have found is 
created some of the most enriching experiences. So like as soon as you arrive, whether you're staying at like a hotel or a hostel, talking to your host who's at the front desk or you're staying in an Airbnb, talk to your host. They have some of the best recommendations ever. And also creating that connection is really it's really different than when you're meeting fellow travelers. And I love creating friends with fellow travelers. I'm still friends with many of them that I've met many years ago, but it's those locals that you really remember those special experiences for years to come. So that's my top travel tip from the years that I've been traveling. That's great. Uh, I would have never guessed that you had some social anxiety, especially with like this format. So very well done on that. Travel Thank definitely you. helps, I think. <laughs> yeah, I but it is that. committing this, this, as you said, forcing yourself out of your comfort zone because only that way you can really keep growing, I guess. Yeah, it definitely is. And I also, so I come from a neuroscience and psychology background. And so I can definitely say this is something kind of like exposure therapy is what we would call it in the trade. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it doesn't need to be everything all at once, but it is really just step by step getting out of your comfort zone. That's exactly what solo traveling is, especially when you get started and mm -hmm. just starting up those conversations. It gets easier every time and you realize everyone else is just as hungry for that connection as you mm -hmm. are. Um, so it's, it has been a really enriching journey and I'm still on that journey, but, uh, yeah. That's amazing. Well, it was lovely chatting to you and I'm sure we'll meet up at some point. I always love saying that because it's just, I've had that happen so many times to just connect over the internet maybe and in some travel group or like this. And you do sometimes cross paths without knowing so hopefully we do at some point it would be lovely. Yeah, absolutely I would love that the world gets smaller every day so yes you know, hopefully. <laughs> well thank you very much stay safe in these crazy times thank you you too thanks Alex bye